fun day, right? <coughs> yeah, yeah, sit down. This is good. Just sit down. Everybody's sitting down. We gotta sit. It's comfortable, you know. Sort of make it like a living room. How are you? Don't shake anybody's hand. Come on. Up. Shake hands. Come on. We'll, we'll use the left hand, okay? The right one I'll hold. How are you? How are you doing? Hey, see, that's more friendly. Right? This, this doesn't hurt. How are you doing? All right. I don't bite. At least not in public. Very familiar. I know that one. Looks kind of like, um, kind of like that one, doesn't it? Kind of like it. Let me guess. You played this on the uh, Creatures of the Night tour. Is that it? <laughs> or the Lick It Up? No, it's the Lick It Up tour. That's where I saw you play that on the Lick It Up tour, right? Was it the Lick It Up video? Something like that. Right? This is great. Looks like everybody's really having a good time. Is that true? Yeah. yeah right. It's so good to see everybody. The living is great. I want to thank everybody for having me here. This is um, a real, a real honor for me to see everybody again. And um, it's just all these nice faces and everybody's friendly. Hey, Jason. Hey, here's my buddy. How you doing? Man, I'm looking around and say, I know you. <laughs> all right. I was gonna say, do you find that you remember a lot of the uh, people from your name? Uh, I see a lot of people that I do remember. It's, just, it's so great to see everybody. It really is. It feels so good. And, um, <clears throat> you know, just to see everybody care. And, uh, you know, we're all here for, you know, for KISS and, and what we all did together. And it's, um, it's just really wonderful. I'm so happy, you know. And I thank you all for having me. It's really... It's <laughs> Start? Sure, we can get started. Well, I mean, just to open it up, I don't think a lot of people uh, maybe know what you've been doing the last eight years since uh, we last saw you in the Vinnie Vincent invasion. I know you got the, Hand me that. the new CD. You've been playing this all day. Uh, thank you. This is finally out. This is uh, what I've been doing the last eight years. And uh, this is finally out on my own record label. It's called Metal Luna Records. And um, it kicks ass. You know? And I wanted to make sure it did. So when I was back, everybody says, yeah. You know? So it's called Vinnie Bits and the EP on Metal Luna Records. And um, it's off the forthcoming album called Guitar Mageddon. It's 15 tracks. And uh, it's very much like my first uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion record. But it's, uh, it's pretty progressive, and it's um, you know eight years in the making. And I think the songs are excellent. and. Um, you know, it's progressed a lot, you know, matured and it's ready to be, you know, it's ready to, like a pit bull being released, you know, being in a cage for a while. So really, it's, it's really thanks to everybody here and uh, with everybody's help and support and love, you know, it'll be a success and it's all for you guys, you know. I think I read recently where you had one tentatively titled Guitars from Hell. Is this, is this what that was going to be? No, actually, Guitars from Hell was... Uh, I was signed to Enigma Records in 1989, and um, they—I started work on the record. But what happened is they—they went—they um, went. Something happened to the label, business-wise, and they were taking on too many acts, spending too much money, and they found themselves in a position where they said, "Hey, we just um, spent so much money, and we can't keep the label to go together anymore." So I was in the middle of that album. And I saw the writing on the wall that the, the label was folding because they had overspent their budgets. And it was a small label, but um, they really were spending quite a bit. I was the last act that they signed, and they signed it for quite a bit of money. And uh, I stopped production on the record, and I didn't do any more work on it. So I let some time go by, and I realized what I really did want to do was to start my own record company. 
And uh, I wanted to launch it with a, a record that I was really proud of. So we spent some years in the making, and I wanted to write songs that I felt were, were really excellent and uh, that would live for a long time. It would be something that people would say to me ten years later, hey, I got, you know, Guitar Mageddon album, and, and it just kicks ass. So we spent time putting Metal Luna records together. As you can see, the mill picture up there, the mill poster is uh, the cover of the album. And uh, that was a recent stage shot we did. And um, I'm just so happy with this. The songs on it are called Euphoria, Get the Let Out, Wild Child, and Full Shred. And uh, the, the album should be released somewhere about uh, October through Christmas, somewhere in that period there. And there's going to be 15 songs on the record. And uh, they're, they're excellent. And I'm really happy with this. It's been a long time in the making. And it's really finally here. So. I thank everybody really so much for uh, hanging in there with me and this has been so much fun to see everybody again, you know, and say, you know, we did some great stuff with KISS and, um, you know, it's still a family, you know, everybody still cares so much, you know, it's, it's just wonderful to see this, it really is. And, and, you know, with the reunion tour coming up, there's just such great vibe in the air, you know, and it's so exciting right now, so I'm thrilled. Well, I was going to ask you that, the CD back and we can hold your hand up here. We understand that uh, getting married, or just got married? Just got married. And, uh, thank you. I know she's here. This year, can you stand up and say hello to everybody? This is my wife, Diane. Go ahead, this year. Big man. And, um, it's just a great story. I saw her standing in the front row of a Lick It Up concert, 1984. And I said, wow, oh, you are so cute. You know, I tried to just wave her to come up stage and she was too embarrassed. And then I didn't see her for two years and saw her when I had, uh, I was at a radio station. She came there and I didn't see her for two more years. And then 1988 was the last time I saw her. And then, and then. Uh, November 12th, about six months ago, I was in Chicago at a KISS convention and I came on stage and somebody said, Vinny, and I looked and I saw her and I said, will you marry me? Yeah. At a KISS so, convention, the proposal came? Okay? Yes, pretty much. Close. Close. <laughs> Close to it. Good story, right? Good story. True. It's a good story. Well, what we did is, um, all throughout the afternoon, we passed out cards for the fans here to go ahead and submit questions. So, why don't we just rifle through some of these? I, I'll tell you, some, I'm more than happy if, if they're nice questions, if they're not rude, you know, I'm here. I answer everything. All right, well, this one should be easy enough. This is always your basic question. Who are you influenced by? And this is from, looks like, Patrick Pittman. Patrick, um, influenced by, I guess that's kind of in, you know, in the early years. Uh, coming up, God, so. I grew up in the 60s, so really it was the Beatles. Um, there was, I grew up in a uh, family that played a lot of country and western music, and um, I heard a lot of things growing up. So I heard jazz, country, western music, I heard Beatles. Beatles did it to me, though. I mean, that was it. That was like the best of the best. And you know, when you're 10, 12, I mean, 12, 13 years old, you see something like that, you say, that's what I want to do, you know, so. Um, that was the excitement part of it, but, you know, as the years go on, it's really everything. Uh, Jeff Beck was a great guitar uh, influence for me, Alan Holsworth, Al Daniel, uh, there's some great players out there. I mean, there's so many great ones. And uh, I just kind of take an influx of everything and, um, and cipher it through and, you know, comes out me. This one was submitted by Ricky Garner. Uh, how old were you when you started playing? Uh, I was very young. I've got a picture of myself with a guitar. This huge thing, I was like three or four years old, and this thing was like three times the size of me. So I think, you know, I had an interest in the guitar about three or four years old, but, uh, to the back you know, of the program. there it is. Yeah. That's, oh my God, that's me right there. <laughs> there it is. There I am, three, three years old. So that shows how much I love the guitar. I really did. I, and it's still, you know, I never put it down. You came out with uh, the, the second part to the question, why do you play Flying V so much and what do you like it, about it more so than any other guitar? I think it's a sexy guitar. I just, to me it just looks, it looks um, uh, really graceful. There's something sexy about it and uh, it's a very interesting look to me. Plus, 
I designed one. If you can see the, the pig, one of the designs here, uh, it's the second from the left. That's my design, and it's got my two initials. There's one V uh, against another V, so that's the one that I use now. Actually, it's the middle picture right there. You can see it again. And um, it's just my initials. It feels real comfortable for me. Says here, uh, it fits me. You know? Well, this question was how did you come up with the design, but you just answered that with the initials. The two VB initials, uh -huh. and they just made sense. And are you endorsing any guitar right now? No, I don't did endorse any guitars. Um, I have been, had so many made for me. I used to be a Jackson guitarist, but uh, Grover Jackson and I were really close friends, and um, he didn't own the company any longer in the Japanese boys, and uh, I haven't really done anything with any companies, you know. I have the guitars I need. I have so many, I can't even count them. So, uh, unless I really want to endorse somebody, I, I really haven't done anything right now. All right, now some to, to some of the meat and potato questions. Uh-oh. <laughs> the meat and potato questions. How did you meet Gene and Paul and get involved in all this? Uh, I've been asked that a lot, and, and it was a good story for me. I was living in California for, uh, I just moved there, about 1978, and um, it was, uh, they were really hard times, you know, they were really, really hard, but that's the way it has to be, you know. And uh, I had some demos made back on the streets with me singing, it was one of them, and I uh, started writing with another writer, and uh, he was also writing with Gene Simmons, so I had asked him if I could be introduced to Gene. This was about 1981, early 1981, and I believe Ace had just left the group at the time, and they were looking for a guitar player. Uh, I met Gene, I, I really like him, he's, he's just a really, really nice person, and we, we hit it off, I think immediately, I mean, it was a good vibe, good feel. So we got together and we did some writing, and the first song we wrote was Killer. And uh, they were recording Creatures of the Night at the time, and they were auditioning guitar players. And uh, I was hoping to have a chance to be in that group. I mean, it was something beyond my wildest dreams, but I said, yeah, I think you know, it would be a great combination, great chemistry. And uh, we were writing more songs and more songs, and uh, the second song we wrote was I love it loud. And uh, I mean, these are great memories for me because they were so exciting, you know, to, to see these things, these songs develop, you know, and, uh, you know, I was in such awe of him, you know, and the accomplishments of Kiss and, you know, what Kiss was to everyone. And I mean, this thing, it always goes through my mind, God, I'm sitting here with Gene Simmons and we're really writing these songs and they really are good, you know. So, uh, I guess it was going real well. In the interim, they were still auditioning guitar players for this record. And um, let me interrupt. Who else did they audition? Do you know offhand? I have no idea. There were there were more people than uh, I, I could literally even count. There were so many people, and uh, I think they were having people play on the record just to audition and see how they were. Their style was really fitting in the album at the time, which was Creatures of Night. So the way it really, uh, the way I'm gonna I'm gonna back backtrack a bit. One of the, the the song Back in the Streets was a demo that I had done with me singing on it. That song was heard by by Kiss's producer at the time. So that is how this all really began. And I think the producer said, let's write with, with Vinny. And that's how it began. So Creatures of the Night record was being recorded. And uh, Gene had suggested to Paul that, you know, this is working out really good with Vinny and uh, suggest that we work together, that we write together. So Paul and I wrote several songs. One was uh, I Still Love You, and there were some others. So then they had uh, asked me to come in and play on the Creatures of the Night album, and uh, it, we found that the styles and the chemistry worked really, really well. And uh, there's a great version of Paul singing back in the streets that was recorded for the Creatures of the Night album. And uh, I, I mentioned Gene, too. I said, gee, you should release that, you know? It, it's really good. And uh, this was when I last saw Gene on the Revenge record. But uh, yeah, it was a real exciting time for me. The Revenge, the Creatures uh, album had five songs that Paul, Gene, and I had brought, written together. And I, I just couldn't believe this was really happening to me. But we had a great chemistry is really what I wanted to say.
and I think we, it showed that we still had a great chemistry as a message went on. And uh, even when I wrote with them in Revenge, it was still, it was still there. The magic was still there. We feel the same way about music, you know? Creatures had two different covers, and you weren't on either one of them. It's funny the two guys that didn't play on it are there. Are there, and they're not. I don't know what the reason for Well, I think I know the first reason with Ace. Um, Ace was still under contractual uh, obligations with Polygram at that time. So his picture was used for, for contract reasons. Um, but the other reason I don't know. And I guess while Creatures came out with Ace's picture on it, even though he wasn't there, let's see if I can remember. Um, even though I was there, I... I guess they couldn't rechange the album cover, you know, again, the second time so soon, so early. And uh, they decided to re-release uh, Creatures somewhere back in, uh, I don't know, what year was it, Phil? Do you remember? 86? <laughs> so by 86, I wasn't with the group at that time, and I guess they just put it out with um, the, the member that they had. All right, so you were working with them on Creatures of the Night. Mm -hmm. What are they, do they, how does it come about that you, you know, what do they say to you as far as designing your makeup? What kind of costume you want to wear? I mean, you must have realized you were getting into something pretty big at that point. I was. It was. Uh, it was beyond. You know, it was beyond me. You know, but um, it's really something you can't ever put into words. What's happening to you? But you're just saying, well, it's happening, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. But here I am. You know, we're, we're, we had so much fun together. It was a good relationship, and uh, we, we really enjoyed the same kind of music, the same kind of taste and things. So we tried at some point, after I recorded guitar on the Creatures album, what we did was um, we talked about things, we played live together to see how it felt. And, and it just kept being more of a development, you know, we played more with them. And at some point, after the, the t entire recording of the uh, Creatures of the Night record, they asked me to, to, to um, join the group, so officially join the group. So once I was asked to officially join the group, then uh, the, design, the makeup designs began. And I will rem remember we spent many, many days, I just told someone this today, we spent a lot of time trying on different makeup. And I have so many pictures at home, early makeup shots of, you know, we design something, draw it on, and we take a Polaroid, you know, and say, well, what do you think? And, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You like this one? Uh, this one's pretty good. Let's try another design. So we went through this for a while before the onk was so obvious and so logical. And uh, it was just such a natural design. So when that was drawn on, uh, we just knew. I mean, everybody said, that's it, that's gorgeous. So, and it was perfect. So that really became part of a, a, real, a real kiss design. So uh, I, I would go home and uh, rehearse the makeup all day long, you know, put it on, take it off, make sure, you know, that it became second nature. And uh, when Creatures of the Tour started, um, we didn't have my boots designed yet, so I was walking around the house all day long in Ace's boots. So, um, you know, walking around the house and I'd go out to the mailbox and, you know, with my makeup on and you know, people look at me. <coughs> uh, some, you were right? Yeah, I'm fine. So it was, it was great, you know? It was, um, it was a fun time, it really was. It was a lot of fun. Do you have any idea why your costume was not displayed in the KISS conventions this past summer? I do have some personal opinions. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know if they're, they're right or not, but you know, I have some, some feelings about it. Um, we've <clears throat> had just some business problems, and uh, I think we're still, you know, I still have a great admiration, a lot of respect for them. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, we work great together. We really do. Uh, we, we think the same way, you know, I think we had a great band, and I thank them on the CD. Um, I always thank them, because really if it wasn't for them, I, I wouldn't be here with you today. And uh, I wouldn't be enjoying all of this, you know? So if it really wasn't for them, none of this would happen for me. Um, but, you know, there's certain business things sometimes that uh, bands go through. Sometimes it's unfortunate, you know, because uh, you don't want to have to face that issue. You know, you just want to play music. 
is that's all I am as a musician. You know, I'm. That's what I did. That's what I loved, and and that's all this is really about is making great music, playing for people, have them enjoy it, and have me enjoy playing for people. So, uh, unfortunately, there is also part that goes with this that you can't. There can't be one without the other. There just can't be life without death. There can't be fun without sadness. There can't be this without that. So the business has to go with this. And we, there were some business issues that we really just could not work out, no matter what. So I think if we could have worked out some of the business situations, uh, I know we'd still be together today. I mean, I know it. But you wrote, you did, you did co-write some stuff with them on Revenge, so. I did. There is still that relationship there, musically. Absolutely, absolutely. the music relationship is absolutely there. And uh, when, when we started work with Revenge, it was as if I hadn't seen them in three or four hours, you know? Um, it, let's see, when we started work on Revenge, it was 91, 1991, and I hadn't seen them since 85. And it was as if, uh, you know, we had not, it's, it's it's if we were, you know, I saw them yesterday or something. So we picked up right where we left off. The relationship was was fine, um, but there's still business things that we couldn't work out. But the music always is there, you know. And I think that's what's really important uh, for everybody is the music, because that's why we are all here. Is really what what we did, what Kiss did, what uh, we did as a band, what it all stands for, and the enjoyment of all these pictures and. And all of us, that's what this is about, is, is we, we come to pay tribute to, to a great band, you know? And uh, it's fun, it's enjoyable. And you know, for me, uh, I said this at one of the conventions, and I, and I think it's really true. I feel that the Beatles were, to me, um, so important, you know? And they left me with so, much, uh, so many great memories and music and things. And when I knew at some point that they weren't getting along and they had business problems and everybody was suing each other, I didn't want to hear it. I, ju I didn't want to know that. I just wanted to know the memories I have of that band as a band and with the music. And to me, that's, what it's re that's what's really important. So, you know, I, it's not fair to, for me to give you little, little answers. I mean, you need to know things that, um, these are questions everybody asks, and for me to shortchange those questions isn't fair. So I think it's business related, but I have uh, a great admiration, great respect for them. Uh, I love working with them, and I do. I feel we had one hell of a fucking great band. So maybe we'll do it again. I mean, I think it's probably. I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, everybody will maybe ask what's going on business-wise, but musically. To know that you still have some sort of relationship is probably, you know, really all anybody needs to know. I hope we work uh, on, on a lot of records again because it happens every time. You know, we we get in a room and uh, great music happens. So, to me, isn't that what this is really all about? You know, you guys want to go home and play records. You know, so to, like me, I want to put something on and go, yeah, that's, great. you know, and that's that's what it's about. All right, well, what happened? Okay, so what happened happened as far as you leaving the band. What was going through your mind, you know, that the next day you wake up and you're not a member of KISS anymore? Did you have, like, a plan for what you wanted to do? Or? Uh, you know something, at, at some, that's a really good question because at some point you say, as much as I want to be here, I can't because it, it's not working this way for me. And, and you feel such, you know, it's such a shame because you really want it to work, you know? You really do. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so stupid not to have something so musically viable not work because you can't work out business things. And, um, you know, when it was over, uh, I'll tell you exactly how it happened. We, we got off the Lick It Up tour, and um, I think the last, last time I talked to Gene at that point was uh, he was doing a movie project, and Paul was doing something, and I think we said, uh, Let's go and record some demos. Everybody will bring them you know, to the table in a couple of months, and we'll start new work, work on the new record. So I went into a recording studio, and I had all these demos of songs that I thought, God, these would be, you know, these were songs I was going to hope would be on the new record. And they were Boys, Boys Are Gonna Rock, Shoot Me Full of Love, uh, Animal, 
twisted, I want to be your victim, and do you want to make love? And I said, hey, this would be our great, great new album, you know? And uh, during the interim, uh, while I was recording that, we were trying to work out our business problems. And we just couldn't come to terms. So I had to say goodbye, and it was, it was painful. I mean, it's always hard to say goodbye to something you love, but uh, it has to be right, you know? If it's not right, no matter what you do, there's, at some point you're gonna feel, I can't do this anymore. So, as I was recording these songs, I'm saying, gee, I really like the way these are coming out. I love this, you know? And I felt a little freedom, but, um, you know, it, it was hard for all of us because I think KISS developed a band with me in it, and it was so hard to change horses for everybody. And I was, I was really afraid, sure. I mean, you know, for me, I was left now alone again, saying, well, um, you know, God's with me or not, I don't know, I have no idea. But what I decided to do is, uh, I, I stayed in a recording studio for about a year and a half, and I recorded these songs, I made them as good as I could, and Chrysalis Records heard, Boys Are Gonna Rock, Shoot You Full of Love, and uh, No Substitute, and they loved them so much. And um, they signed me to a very, very big record contract, and it was uh, the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. So those songs really were meant to be for animalized record, but they never were that. And I said, gee, I love the way these are sounding, so that it became Vinnie Vincent Invasion. And uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion was really never a band. Uh, I recorded those songs with a singer. I did basically everything but the drums. And I used uh, Pat Benatar's drummer on, um, on, the, on the demos, and they were really great. They were so excited. And then everyone was trying to tell me, uh, you should have a band because these don't sound like a solo act. So, you know, I, was, I hired people to, to be in the band. But it was really, you know, a solo project, you know. Well, Vinnie Vincent Invasion, you did how many tours? Because I saw you once here in Atlanta. We did, uh, I did uh, the Alice Cooper tour. I, I opened for Alice Cooper and then Iron Maiden. And that was uh, that was a little over six months. It was it was a lot. Of, it was great. It was really great. And the record was uh, was really hot. It was played uh, everywhere. And it, uh, I was living uh, I was in L. A. at the time, and KNAC was which was you know L. A.'s metal station was playing four songs an hour. I mean, it was just unbelievable. It was astounding to, to tune into the station, and I'm hearing myself like four or five times an hour. And it was it was a wonderful time. It was excellent. How did you hook up with? Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the guy that sang on this EP. And this EP. Robert was he a, was he your original yeah. singer in Vinnie Vincent Invasion? He was my original singer, and he's he's another one with uh, with me. We have an instant chemistry. I mean, when he sings my songs, it's you know it's a marriage. It, it's like it's very natural. So so what happened with that, and how did you come to get hooked up with uh, Mark Slaughter? Uh, this, this is a good story, and this is also the truth, and um, one thing that I do regret is that while you are assigned to record companies and publicists and things, everyone wants to conjure up stories to cover up things or to make something look better or try to divert this and try to say, well, you know, no one's going to know about this if we just do this. Mm -hmm. So what happened in Vinnie Vincent Innovation was... Uh, as I said, it was a solo project. I recorded the record by myself. I had it, had uh, the singer sing with me on the record. Um, <coughs> yes, those were the demos, but I had to re-record the things, you know, again. But that was in my sound, you know. That singer was very good for me. And uh, he was presented with a, a contract. And here's where business gets ugly again. He was presented with a contract uh, from Chrysalis Records, and uh, he really looked at it and he says, I can't sign this. And uh, it was really, uh, really a loss for me because uh, his voice fit my style of what I write. And uh, he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. It was against, you know, business for him to do that. And uh, I respected him for it, but uh, also somebody said, hey, you know, this record's taken off. And it's being played all over MTV, and it's, uh, you know, you basically have a hit here. I mean, this thing's taken off still. 
You had one song on a movie soundtrack, one of those smasher movies. Uh, I had a lot of movie Love soundtracks. Kills. Uh, <laughs> Love Kills, some, uh, there was some other movies that had uh, some other songs. Um, I don't know, my, my records find their way, their way into these movies. Half of these movies, I don't know what they are, but they're in there. And um, anyway, so uh, Robert um, had to leave for business reasons. And uh, somebody found uh, the, other, the other singer, and I said, absolutely not. I don't think he has a God-given talent to do this, and I am completely against it. Um, it sounds amateurish. It sounds, uh, it, it was really, I was watching what I created in my music, just, you know, being the standard lowered, you know? And uh, it was, it, it really sickened my heart a lot because you know, what I do, I have to feel good enough to, to know what I do is going to please other people. And, and I'm my own worst critic. If it's, if it's shit to me, it's going to be shit to somebody else. So the tours were booked, the record was taken off, and uh, I found myself saying, now what do I do? And, um, you know, he was there saying, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I said, I, I can't do this. I just can't do it, I can't do it. And then Chrysalis walked in and said, hey, we'll, we'll promote this uh, cutesy, cutesy thing. And I said, but I'm not cute. <coughs> I'm just not cute. This is not what I do. You know? This is not my music. And uh, they won. Their, their decision won because they said, we're the record company. We're the bank. We stay what goes. You have to go on tour. Your record's happening. Uh, you know, he'll sign our contract. You go. And this is who you take. And I said, uh, all right, I'll go, but I'm not happy because this isn't what is good enough for me. And um, that's what happened. And uh, I ended up promoting people that I really didn't feel had the God-given ability that I needed to do my music. It takes a lot to do what I write. And if, if it's not there uh, with someone to execute it, it won't happen. You know, it just won't, at least for me, it won't happen the way I want it to happen. Do you have any sort of relationship, be it uh, now with uh, Dana Trump and Mark Slaughter? Uh, I, don't, I don't have a relationship with people that I don't feel, uh, you know, like there's, there, there's, someone's either my friend personally, or I respect what they do, and that to me is a relationship. You know, if, if they're neither one, then there's no basis for a relationship with me, because I'm too busy. All right, so when that came to an end, you must have felt like you were back in a similar position that you were when you left Kiss. Well, here, here I am again. That's right, basically, here I am again. So, but, but that's okay, because I'm a tiger, you know. I, I, I'm a tiger that never gets it, you know. I still, I'm still there. So, you know, you're faced with all kinds of odds, you're faced with all kinds of obstacles, and, and I'm used to that. I'm really, really used to that. So when you're faced with it, you just say, fuck it. You know, you put blinders on and you go straight through. And when you go straight through, all the shit on this side and the shit on this side, you just say, I don't see it, I'm going straight through. So what do I need to do? Okay, this is out, this is out, this has to be done. And it's a slow climb. I mean, it's not, it's not quick. But um, that's why the, uh, the EP started. It, that's why the Metal Lunar Records has started. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's all begun again, you know, and, and this is, now that it's right, I can bring it to you, you know, and if it's not right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, the record wouldn't be here, I mean, that, it's, it's, I'm so proud of it now, because now I can say, okay, guys, this is what I feel real good about, and I think you're really going to like this. That, to me, is all that matters, you know, not selling a billion records, not uh, being on the covers of all these magazines. To me, that, that's, that's not important. What's important is, you know, I've got a record that I know I love, and I think you're going to love. And that way, everything else follows, you know? It's right. a natural course. Any, I mean, you're doing this show today, and you, I think you go to Europe this week. You yeah. You do the uh, European Kiss conventions. Yeah. What, what about touring? I mean, you... Do you miss being out on the road and playing in front of uh, I miss it when when it's correct and right. And now that it's all ready and right, and the music is right, and it kills, it's got, now I want to be out playing in front of everybody. But in the, in the interim, it's all been set, setting up the record company and the new record and everything. So, but uh, now I'll be back, you know, and I hope everybody comes and uh, has a good time at my shows. And 
One final thing, we're going to start the autographing in just a minute here. This is the first time this has been available, am I correct? This is a limited edition. It's never been available before. It won't be in any stores. You cannot get this anywhere. So this is the very first day, by the way. The very first day this can be done. So it's a special day. It's kind of born today, you know? All right, anything else you want to I really want to say thank you so much for having me. I mean, I, I, it really means so much to me, and uh, it's because of you that I'm back, really, honestly. So my heart goes out to everybody, and I want to thank you so much for, for the love and support. I really thank you all so much. All right, I'm going to hand for Benny Vincent. Break, maybe five minutes and get things set up over here so we can start the autographings. Again, the way we're going to do it, everybody with tickets numbered 1 through 100 should begin lining up.
Thank you. 